All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to give you an extremely elegant proof as to why the rank of A transpose equals to the rank of A. And in fact, I'll show this more generally. I will show that the rank of T transpose equals to the rank of T for linear transformations T. And, and in fact, the reason it's elegant is because we use some abstract mathematical terminology called the dual space. And now we can finally see why this is so useful. So I just want to remind you a couple of things. So first of all, the dual space V star is just a set of linear transformations from V to F. Both of those do not work. Okay. And then the nice thing is, suppose you have a subspace of V, which let's say we can represent it this way. So suppose you have a profile view and this is V and this is a subspace. Then in a previous video, I defined the annihilator. I love that word, which is W naught, which is just a set of functionals in V star such that F is zero on W. So F of W equals zero for all W and W. So what the annihilator looks like, it's just functions which are definitely zero here could be non-zero somewhere else. So that is F and W naught. And last time I showed that this is indeed a subspace of V star. And moreover, I showed this very nice identity that the dimension of W plus the dimension of W naught equals to the dimension of V. So in other words, even though those things are two different spaces, their dimensions balance out, which should remind you a bit of the rank nullity theorem. And in fact, the proof is very similar. And I invite you to watch the other video for that. Uh, and indeed, we can somehow treat this identity, which is interesting, to prove our result. And for this, I would also like to remind you what the transpose is. So suppose T is a linear transformation from V to W. Then we can define T transpose where it's flipped. It goes from W star to V star. So again, T transpose goes the other way around. And it takes a functional in W star as an input and spits out another functional in V, T transpose of G, and the way T transpose of G is defined, T transpose of G is just G of T from Game of Thrones, so G composed with T. And again, I've made a bunch of videos on that, make sure to watch them, it's really cool. But what I want to show you is, somehow, the T transpose and the annihilator are related. So this is the main claim for today. I want to show that the null space of T transpose equals to the range of T annihilator. So interestingly, the um, null space of the transpose is related to the range with this uh, you know, transpose and the annihilator, which is really cool. It's like one formula that takes care of so many things in linear algebra. The null space, the transpose, the range, and the annihilator. Sort of like how Euler's identity is so beautiful, because it brings e, pi, i, 1, and 0 together. This one brings all the other stuff together. And actually, the proof isn't bad if you understand what the terms mean. So let me keep that, because we need the definitions. So, what does it mean for G to be in the null space of T transpose? So let me prove this. Well, that's true if and only if, if you apply T transpose to G, you get the zero vector. But what is the zero vector here? Well, T transpose G is a functional in V star, so it's the zero functional in V star. 
But what is t transpose of g? You just flip it. So you know that g of t equals to the zero functional, which is the same thing as saying that g of t of x equals to f0x, which is zero, for every x. Which is the same thing as saying that g of t of x equals zero. But look, t of x is just an arbitrary vector in r of t. So what this says is that g takes all of r of t and maps it to zero. Or if you want, uh, g of w equals zero for all w in r of t. But by definition, this just means that g is in the annihilator of what? Of r of t. And therefore, because we have this equivalence, the null space of t transpose equals to the uh, annihilator of the range. And using this, we can now show our beautiful identity. Ah, what a nice thing to do, linear algebra. Uh, so, in fact, here's a corollary. Or, I guess, claim. So that was the first claim. A second claim, and that's what we want to show, is that the rank of t transpose equals to the rank of t. And in a second, we'll deduce it with matrices. So uh, what does that mean? The rank, by definition, is the dimension of the range equals to the dimension of the range of t. And well, as, as I told you, this thing, identity, should remind you a bit of the rank nullity theorem. And in fact, we can apply the rank nullity theorem to T transpose. So by rank nullity for T transpose, we get that the dimension of the null space of T transpose plus the dimension of the range of T transpose which is what we have here, equals to the dimension of what? Well, remember, t transpose goes from w star to w, as to v star. So here, the domain of t transpose is w star, so it's dimension of the domain, which is the dimension of w star, but at least in finite dimensions, so here we do it for finite dimensions, this equals to the dimension of w. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, why did I even bother with this? Because we have the following identity. The null space of T transpose, it's the annihilator of the range. So we get dimension of the annihilator plus the dimension of the range of T uh, transpose equals to the dimension of W. And now remember what we've shown. The nice thing is, is that the dimension of the range plus the dimension of the annihilator, they kind of cancel out. So, so dimension of R of T circle plus the dimension of R of T is equal to the dimension of I think the input, which here, uh, I mean, the, the, the thing this is a subspace of, which is W. So in particular, what we get is the dimension of R of T naught equals dimension of W minus dimension of R of T. And now we can simply take this identity and put it back here. So, and we're almost done, so we get dimension of W minus dimension of the range plus dimension of the range 
of T transpose equals to the dimension of W. W, we just forget about it. And we get minus this plus this is zero. So the dimension of range of T transpose equals to the dimension of the range of T. And again, that's just by definition, it's the rank of T transpose equals to the rank of T. So that's why in finite dimensions, T transpose and T have the same rank. And the question is, how, does that how do we conclude that A and A transpose have the same rank? Well, remember, there's a, given a matrix, there's an easy way of finding a linear transformation. It's this thing called LA, like Los Angeles going from Fn to Fm, and then Lax, worst airport in the world, is A times X. And because given a matrix A, we can construct a linear transformation, and all we need to do is simply apply this to La. So let T be LA, then we get that the rank of LA equals to the rank of LA transpose. But then what is the rank of A? It's by definition, it's precisely the rank of LA. Because we know how to define ranks of linear transformations. And so for the rank of a matrix, you just find the rank of the linear transformation AX. And also we can show that LA transpose is in fact LA transpose. I think you just use the fact, you know, the definition of, uh, um, well, it follows because the matrix of a linear, the, matrix of the transpose of a linear transformation is the transpose of the matrix of a linear transformation, which I've done in a previous video. So because this is true, we get rank of LAT. And the rank of LAT, again, the rank of L of a matrix is the rank of that matrix. So this is the rank of A transpose. The point is it's very easy to go from linear transformations to matrices that way. And in particular, we have our claim that the rank of A transpose equals to the rank of A. And did we do any weird row reduction? No, we just used some clear theory about dual spaces. Of course, you have to understand dual spaces first, but then once you understand it, things become very elegant. All right, I hope you like this little uh, extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.